A craftsman battles for perfection, never willing to give in or walk away. I'm Eric Gorgeous. I built custom motorcycles from the ground up, using the tools I was born with and skills passed on by countless generations before me. I wasn't always a motorcycle builder. I worked nine to five, chasing money and titles, and it nearly broke me. So I threw it all away and started over. I decided to work with my hands to feed my soul, and I've never looked back. I believe there's a craftsman in all of us. Join me on a quest to uncover the skills that built our society, one craftsman at a time. We'll discover what drives the men and women who I call my heroes. We'll learn their craft and maybe even find some inspiration along the way. There's a part of you in everything you do, your legacy, a craftsman's legacy. The earliest forms of engraved patterns have been linked to ancient civilizations around the world. Metal engraving has been used to honor gods, to signify family wealth, or simply decorate objects used in everyday life. The engraving process used today is attributed to the European goldsmiths of the Middle Ages, who would inscribe their metalwork and create print impressions as a way to document their designs. The level of detail that came with the engraving by European artists and goldsmiths in the late 1400s gave rise to reproductive print. By the 20th century, mass production and the engraving of objects by tracer-guided machines increased, which diminished the role of the engraver and his customary process. Today, the golden age of engraving is remembered by craftsmen like David Ricardo, who has been able to adapt the traditional techniques of metal engraving of the past and turn modern day objects into extraordinary timeless pieces of art. David? Hi. I'm Eric Gorgeous. I'm Dave Ricardo. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you, bud. Come on in. Tell me what you do. Uh, I'm a metal engraver. Um, I work on all kinds of metal, and uh, I put a chisel through it and make cool designs, hopefully. So tell me where you grew up. I grew up in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Yeah? Yep. That's on the Susquehanna River, and it's the home of Little League World Series in northern central Pennsylvania. The Eagles guy or Steelers guy? Steelers, all Steelers, the way, right on. forever. <laughs> Since this high. Really? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. We blew up. It was a blue collar town and we watched football and played hard and did all kinds of stuff. And everybody that, you know, I think that's where I probably got some of my work ethic and, and working with my hands from. When oh you yeah. Really get down to it. My dad worked as a boilermaker and a pipe fitter. So, you know, go help him. You know, he took me hunting too, and that's where I kind of saw engraving a little bit on, on, on guns, on guns and stuff right, like that. Right, right. Now, you know, just talking to you about that, just kind of, it, I started seeing that way back then, and I just never made that connection until just now. Like, Isn't that I, cool? It is. It is really cool. But you fell in love with working with your hands pretty early on. Yeah, constantly be making something or taking something out of the garage I shouldn't have, and. Oh, I need that. You taking know. things apart. Yeah, taking yeah. things. I'm really good at that. <laughs> Getting them back together. I always have extra parts, you know? You and me both. Yeah, so I got a parts jar, and then I can make something else out of it. I went from high school to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh. Okay. And uh, I went, pursued a, a visual communications. I got a degree in, well, What's advertising, visual? A, advertising art. Okay. okay. So it was... Um, that I understand. Yeah. So yeah, where'd you go from college? Uh, Everywhere, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you I left bounced college, around. Um, what did you want to do? Not be in college. <laughs> um, I wanted to go out and check out the world. Went out to California. I, I bounced all around. Are you good at drawing? I can draw. I can get down the road. I mean, I've been trained to do that, and it, it plays an integral part in engraving. I would say, you know, almost all my stuff is is worked out on a piece of paper before I even come to metal. What do you like about metal? What is it to you that draws you to it? 
there's so many different combinations of it and how it comes to be. It, it's just a fascinating thing to me and how it's built our country, our world, our lives. It's just this, and it comes from, you know, sand, it comes from heat, it comes from this, and it's just played an integral part of all our lives. It's, it, I don't know, it's metal, I, I dig it. I, I'll, I'll be dead before I get to do all the things I want to do with it. I hear that. You know? My project list, like oh. my side list of all the things I want to build in my life before I die, it just keeps growing, but I, I can't seem to get anything crossed off it. I got drawer broken dreams out there. <laughs> It's like, well, <laughs> moving on, you know. I got. I'll come back and visit it, maybe, you know. But then the list keeps growing. So. So how did you find your way into engraving? I mean, how did you discover that? Good friend of mine from the art program, who I looked up to as a painter. He'd be at Ways Garden, all the craft shows, selling stuff, and uh, he was a painter at the time. But he had moved into metal smithing, and I came back into town and reconnected with him. So I started growing and learning with him. And uh, we started making things and figured out how to put my stones in and do things. But I wanted to kind of separate from what was going on. And I went to the library and I'm just, I love the library. We had a great library too. Yeah. So I found a book, uh, Steel Canvas, and it was a bunch of gun engraving. I'm like, uh oh, what? Wow, this is awesome. So it's like, oh, I gotta learn, I gotta be an engraver. So I get a, a graver and I think, oh, I just, Start going, it's gonna be easy. Man, it wasn't. It was it was atrocious and stuff like that, scratching and stuff, but I didn't know. Right. But I knew I wanted to do it. And I found that there was a school in Kansas and that you could pay and go out for a week and they you'd learn from an accomplished engraver. I, I was I learned to sharpen my tools and then um, went from trying to do everything traditional by hand and hammer to a pneumatic system, which is basically air coming through and a little piston driving behind the graver, which is essentially tapping, uh -huh. or, or, or you know, just a smoother, and that's what they taught. So I took that knowledge, came back home, started, you know, was pushing my wax and doing everything. And the teacher that I had at the school had went to Italy and had trained with masters there. Oh, okay. And uh, I contacted him and he said, uh, were you that serious? I said, absolutely. At that time I'd left with the guy that I was working on. I had my own line, I had my own jewelry, I had everything ready, you know. Okay. I mean, I was operating fine. I was able to buy my tools. And he said, well, if you're that, you know, would you consider taking an apprenticeship up in Northern Michigan? Wow. You know, being asked to do that, I was like, that, yeah. My wife was working in an advertising spot. Uh, the, nice job. Um, our son was four, so I cashed in, man. She quit her job, left the insurance. We, uh, I sold everything almost. I still got some silver stuff out there, but for the most part, I got rid of everything that I didn't need and was all in at that point. And no looking back. There's no 5% uh, Dave, there's no 20% Dave. It's like in or out, right. you know, hot or cold. There's, there's no gray area. I'm so grateful that the other people in my life are willing to be behind me because I changed their lives too. Sure. You know, and that's pretty selfish and demanding. And if I didn't put all of what I do into that, that would be letting them down because they changed their lives for me to do what I want to do. That's, that's amazing. Do you see yourself as more of a craftsman or an artist? Some days I feel more like an artist. Some days I feel more like not an artist. But I think that it's all ultimately art. Do you call your workspace a studio or a workshop? I call it the shop. The shop, right on. The whole <laughs> the, the, the church. But like if I'm just removing a background or doing tedious stuff, it's kind of like, oh, I'm going to the shop. The other days, it's like, ah, I'm going down there to do something really fun, and then it's kind of like church. Well, I'm chomping at the bit to get to church, man. Let's do it. All right. Cool. Come on, bud. <laughs> He's a spaz. Yeah, he is. <laughs> this is his domain. Yeah? So this is your shop here? Yep, this is the shop. Yeah, watch yourself there. This is. It was nice and soft. This turned into an ice pack. Come on in. Oh, this place is great. 
Yeah. Man, I dig your workshop. Oh, it's thanks. so cool. It's nice and small and, you know, it's intimate. You know it's what I mean? Cozy. That's, yeah. It's cozy. It's, it got to be comfortable, I think. If you're out uncomfortable, you're, you're, you're more worried about being uncomfortable than what you're doing. So that's, I kind of like the, I spend more time here than I do in the house. So it's kind of yeah. make it home. And so what are all these? You got a bunch of oh, different tools here. Yeah, these are hand push graver tools. And uh, they're all- they're Graver? All, graver. That's what they're these gravers. are called, gravers. Yep. Gravers. Okay. Bellino. They're they're actually oh, it's a bellino is is actual tool. It's an Italian term for the the actual burin or a graver. Okay. Now they have different you know you know this is this is a flat and this is used to um, remove flat material wide space or to come on the inside of something and create a bevel or for lettering. Okay. Um, some of these are really bent to get into odd shaped places uh -huh. and uh, these are more for like. Um, inside of a pocket watch, inside of a spoon, are really hard to get areas. And these are, these are very old. You know, I don't use them that much. Uh, I like to have them because when the one time when you do need them, it's really, really nice to have. Hey, how come all the handles are like shaved in half? Do you know how come? Oh, because it just sits like that. Yeah. So you're holding it like right in the Yeah, right in, in the palm. palm. Right in the palm, right, right here. And you're, that's why I kind of got an overdeveloped muscle right there. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> from pushing. Um, wow. The scopes, you know, they're, they're, and there are people that still use these today. It's like a 10 power loop where you'd be over top of your area and working at a small level, you know, and you can see what you're doing and it works. But, you know, for that, it's easier to strap on one of these. And if I want to go even more, it's better to look through a set of those. And then I can adjust the magnification and the range of how far up I want it to be and how far away I want it to be. These are set, you know, this is a 10 power, it has to work from a certain operating distance, right. and that's pretty much set. And you gotta keep your head at a distance where you see these. So this would be well, one way of magnification. Some people just, they're fortunate enough to have great enough eyesight, and I've seen them do these beautiful, most intense looking things. And I'm just jealous because it's, they don't need anything because they can see it. I think this, this craft is going to have some serious seat time into it. It's all about seat time. Yeah. It's all about seat time. Um, you know, I have students come, I teach and they'll be like, well, it's not as good as yours. Well, I hope not. I mean, I, you know, after <laughs> a week, but you'll get there. So when do I get to start playing with stuff here? Right man? now, man, let's go. Have I'm going to be using this? Yeah, absolutely. The best of the best. We're going to make a money clip, right? Yes, we're gonna you are. Well, yep, we're going we're gonna to put some scratches on it. Nice. We're going to use nickel because it's fairly easy to start with and we won't be breaking our tips. First, we're just going to get you the feel of it. I'm going to screw it Do up. Do not uh, screw it up. <laughs> I'll show you what screwing up is. <laughs> the, you're not going to screw up. I mean, we're going to try to do everything we can to avoid that. It's going to be really foreign. If you've never done it before, you're going to be a little bit of resistance. You're going to put the graver in the palm of your hand. Okay. And it started. So now the more, is the more you're it. hitting it. Yeah. This controls the strike, how heavy you're hitting it. You hear that? Yep. So being a shop guy, you know, if you're winding your tool, that, yeah. we don't want not that. Good. We want that. Nice and consistent. Nice and consistent. Now, this is, is a 90 degree graver, so it starts in a V. And this is the point that we're gonna be working off of, right here. So what we, what we wanna do first is we're gonna scribe a line. And we're gonna to wanna to put the top of that graver onto the line. Okay. Okay? You know how you're familiar with one of these. Yep. Go ahead and scribe a line out on from this side on here. Okay. And it doesn't really matter. We're, what we're going to do is just get you on the on the field cut in here. Here you go. You're on it. And I'm holding this right? Yep. Give it a little, little grip. Yeah. There you are. Sounds good. Yeah, you're mo making chips. You see that curl that's coming off? Oh, there? yeah. Yeah. Very nice. That That's great to have that machine background where you know you're not overworking your tool. A lot of this is by sound. That sounds very nice. Okay, you can stop. Well, wow.
So you're just pricking it like. I'm going in, see how it's aligned? I'm going in, taking it, and removing it. Oh, jeez. So it, it becomes like almost a steady, almost like a sewing machine sort of motion. Yeah. As you go across. And you, you did everything with these for the first year or two. Because I started doing metal and it was just chicken scratch. It was bad. I didn't know about sharpening. I didn't know about the other things. Okay. And then silver started getting a little bit better. And then once I got to the school, I was like, yeah, I'm all in. But I still had those and I still kept them. And then when I do work on my copper plates, I still like to put my I hand up like in them. still like to use these. Okay. Well, let me give this a try. We're going to keep the same lock dress. We're going to come through feel the push in the back of the graver. Find your spot and resistance. Very nice. Perfect. You feel, but you feel that resistance. I enjoy this. Like I enjoy the, this this manual aspect of it, and I could see the benefit in in learning this style first because it's totally different than the pneumatic. Like here, you can, I could feel that tension, uh, yeah. you know, and yeah. and sort of feel uh, have a, I have a better feeling for that angle even in the, you know couple hours that we've been sitting here you know and, what I mean and absolutely it's the metal too um, knowing what metal to start out with it helps you get the little if you were starting to dig that in the steel and you're breaking it and you get a little bit discouraged and everything oh yeah now you've got that greasy nice feel and everything's slicking right along and it makes you want to keep going and do more So now we've got our design, yep. and we're going to transfer that design to a piece that's later going to be engraved. Yep. Right? Yep. Once again, this is big. We reduce it to the size of our image. If we put it onto a piece of acetate, now we have the backwards image, and I can easily place this right where I want to be. Okay. Yeah, look at good right there. You lay it down, and then you're just going to rub over it. Now we're going to take our burnisher. All right, it's on there. Yeah. Okay. Now. Yeah. All right, David. So now we've got we've got the money clip in your ball vise. Yep. And you're gonna start scratching. No. I'm not. No. No. We've transferred the metal. Now I want to put a scribe on it because what oh. happens is when we move our hand over or back and forth, we could lose the whole design. So what I like to do is put what I'm gonna be working on in front of me so I can look up out of it. I can look in the scope, make sure that we're we're on the same page. Um, sometimes, you know, while this is a great technique, it's not perfect. So I want to make sure that I've got every little loop to do, every little, every little thing that's on the uh, on the logo. And you'll describe the whole design right now. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Would you like to try? Yes. All right. Here you go. You think I could? Yeah, man. I like to actually get my hands dirty and work. Absolutely. It's not going to run away. Just oh, hold it right there. And it, it'll help you balance it too. You're a little bit balanced onto it. It feels a lot better actually holding on. Yeah, it, it does. For you know, nice and easy. All right, so we've already scribed everything in. I've, I've lightly gone over the lettering. And what I want to do, I, I, I just want to make a nice even cut around the scribed areas. And I see your other hand keeps adjusting that vise a little bit. You're adjusting it, the angle, it you're does. turning it a little bit, which is. It does. And, you know, a lot of people, there's different guys, they'll, they'll work. Adjusting this to the pitch or whatever. Uh -huh. I, I'm full contact. I use my nose. I, I roll it around. It's 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 uh, probably my only form of physical exercise, really. <laughs> um, <laughs> sitting on my butt all day. But now, how long would a project like this take you normally? Well, it depends. You know um, how elaborate you want to go. Uh, we could make a two-day project out of it you could do it in uh, several hours uh, I like to go for more detailed so eh, maybe eight nine hours there you go 
Tell me again what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any job that sits in your mind and it was like you were just like blown away with the opportunity to do that? You know, did anybody come to you with something every so special? Every one of them, and, I, and every day it is that someone will allow me to work on their stuff and get that special bond that they're going to give to their grandkid or my grandkid's going to see. It's, it's every, everyone, everyone is that special. That's fantastic. Yeah. No hurry. We're in no hurry. We want to concentrate on stay in the line that you scribe. Let the ball do the turning. There you go. Awesome. Craftsmanship is imperfection, right? <laughs> so quite a bit's done here. Yeah, we've got the outline, the backbones of the scrolls. We've got all the the lettering done. Um, now it's just the icing on the cake really is making it come to life, um, this shading process. And it's using the same technique where start the line in and lift up. It makes a thin line to a thick line. And what we'll do is we'll have them all converge so it makes a nice gray gradient. Oh, okay. So it'll look, you know, it'll get give life and color to it. And as I'm going through, another little trick I like to use is I'll get this leaf cut, and then what I'll do is put a little WD-40 or a little bit of oil or a little bit of, even I could use the, uh, the uh, transfer goop. Wow, what a huge difference that made. It, it does, it makes, it, it's the icing. It's, it's the really the fun part, you know. You get to see everything from the sketches. If you, if you were doing the sketches like on the knife I showed earlier, this is where it all comes to life. Holy smokes, dude. Look at that. Wow. We still have to go ahead and I'm gonna use what's a bevel or a bright cut. Oh my gosh, look at this thing. Hold on a minute. So what's it, left? I mean, to well, me, gotta, that looks done. No, we gotta. We got a bevel cut. We're gonna make we're gonna make legacy jump out at you. It's gonna be 3D. Reach a high point of that line. So we're done. This is ready. Almost. One little thing. Almost. What's the last step? Well, we're gonna put some paint in the cut so that we can view it on all different angles. Um, I sometimes I, I prefer it just like this, but it, 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 it's a cool thing because you see here sometimes we just get sh you can't yeah. see what's going on. So we're yeah. just gonna put a little bit of paint in there. Magic secret. So we're gonna put flat the flat black. Flat black in the low spots, right? Yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna go right over top of it. Oh man. Look at Thank that. You. Now how do you sign your work? Do you mark your work? I would assume I do. you do. I do, I do. And uh I'm if it's a uh, a gun or a piece, I, I like to put it out of the way because I I'm the least my signature I would hope would be the least interesting uh part of it. So this is my family Chris, so this is my craftsman R, and I'm gonna put it on the back, and that's how you know I did it. So show me what else you got here. Oh, sure. You got a couple different things. We got a, a really cool ring here. This yeah. is just amazing. Thank you, that's that's my signet ring, and uh, I really like to cut uh, seal rings and coin dies in back and reverse. I like to do every aspect of it. That makes and be, sense. Yeah, and being able to do, you know, knives, firearms, or or printing plates, or belt buckles, or jewelry. It, it just broadens the field. It, it, to be a professional engraver, you know, it, not that tunnel vision. So that one is cool. And then I really, really enjoy doing watches. Wow. <laughs> so this one, the actual case, is completely sculpted in three dimensions, stone set, Little wow. demon faces and scroll work, and then the back of the movement of the watch is completely engraved as well. Wow, look at that. I've been, I've been fortunate enough to be in publications and magazines and books and... Um, I like the tattoo machines. I do too, I do too. Beautiful work. Well, thank you, man. It's been awesome having you guys out here, and it's, I kind of get to show somebody some stuff once in a while, you know. It's, being hauled up in a little cave and not getting out much. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's fun to show stuff what's going on. Beautiful work, man. Thank you. If I had to use one word to describe my time with David Ricardo, 
It would be passion. I love working with people who truly love what they do. And it's people like David that are going to restore our faith in craftsmanship.